Welcome back. In this session, we're going to take a look at how to create huge, fast landscapes. This is the secret to having massive landscapes that cost you almost nothing to render. And um, luckily, all the tools we need to do it are already built into UE4. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here, we've been kind of loading in this area, which is toward the middle of the map. And to be able to properly see this, we need to move our starting point over to a corner of the map so that we can, can get the full usage of it. So I'm going to drop our starting point over here. So what I usually do is drag an empty actor, make sure it's above the landscape. We had a little trouble with that in the last video. And then I'm going to copy down these numbers. So let's open up our third person BP blueprints. And we go to our game mode. why it always decides to be super small. We just need access to these numbers here. And we're going to copy these in. This is where our starting point is going to be, because normally it pulls the starting point from the database. But in this case, we need a way to debug. And having to modify the database every time is too much trouble. OK, so now we drop into the world, and we're up here. now you will quickly see what the problem is. Um, it's only loading two or three of our nine tiles. And that is obviously not what we want. We want infinite views that go on forever. Uh, in the game I'm working on, we have 400 one-kilometer tiles, and you can view the entire 20-kilometer map all at once. And it still runs, <laughs> it still renders all that at more than 120 frames per second. So um, we've got a problem here. Um, it's not rendering the whole thing. So what can we do about it? So what we want to do is we want to come up here, and we're interested in this summon level details. OK. And it's got our nine. Um, it's got nine of them here for us. So we're going to go into one of these, and we want Let's take a look at something else real quick here, actually. So this world composition shows our tiles, right? These are our nine tiles. We're over here in this one, two, two. And so I think we're only rendering these two. Yeah, we are. So if you go up and you hover over this, you can see the streaming distance is 50,000. That was the default. We didn't change it. If you wanted to change it, you just go here and create a new layer, set a new streaming distance, and then you can just right click on the tiles and move them over to that one. Um, it's assigned to layer. So, but we actually don't. We want 50,000. Landscapes are expensive, and I don't want to render these uh, seven using the landscape uh, tool because that's going to kill our frames per second. So, we need to do something else, right? Because we're only streaming 50, and each one of these cubes is 100,000, and we're only streaming 50,000. So we're streaming half, half of one of these. Um, so potentially, if we move too far back over this way, a little bit further, we would only render one, right? Because this one would be more than 50 away. This one would be more than 50 away. This would be more than 50 away. So we need to come up with a better solution, and there is a better solution. It is these static mesh LODs. Static meshes are far faster than landscapes. So we're going to have two of them here. And we're going to set up the distance for this first one. This is pretty aggressive, so you may tweak it back a bit. We're going to do 50,000. So it'll extend another 50,000. And then this last one here, we're just going to go the full 2 million because we want to go all the way out to the edge. Um, the largest map without modifying the engine is uh, is currently uh, 20 kilometers. Um, however, I have worked with some people who went in and modified the world max and world half max in the engine, and they got it going out to <coughs> to um, 100,000, 200,000. So it is possible now. Um, it has been since I think 4.16 when they added the the multiplayer world origin shifting. Okay, so but 20k is huge. So unless you have like fast vehicles or something, 20K is probably all you need. OK, so the first thing that's confusing, static mesh details percent. It's like, oh, this is great. I can reduce the number of polys with this number. No, you can't. That was for Simply Gone. 
So that doesn't work for us. So instead, we use this landscape export LOD. What it's basically going to do, the, the system was already creating in the landscape lower LOD levels with less, um, with less polys. And so we're basically just going to grab one of those as a way to reduce it. So I've found that three, a smaller number is higher resolution, a lower number is, or a higher number is lower resolution, they're backwards. So this three, um, it usually generates me a, it usually generates somewhere like 15, 16,000 polys. So you might, if you want a little higher quality, you might bump that up to two. And then in this last one, we're kind of doing this just to show it, but um, you probably would use four here. We're gonna use five. It drops down to like 600 polys. So normally each one of these tiles at the maximum resolution has one million uh, vertices. And you can figure that real easy by timesing, by basically doing it's a thousand by a thousand with a one meter resolution. So, uh, cause it's a kilometer by a kilometer. So um, going from a million down to, you know, 16,000 here is a huge drop. And then going down to like 600 is an even bigger drop, uh, but that's the settings we're going to use today. So the next problem is that we now need to bake a material um, to match that. So we're basically going to bake this. Uh, in some cases, if you need higher, you may have to bump this up to 204DA, a 2K texture. On these closer ones, you probably would not need that on this further away one, because uh, at that point, the the resolution doesn't really matter that much. You might even get away with 512. You have to play around with those, tweak those. I think we run 2048 for the first LOD drop, but we're just going to use 1024 today. And here's where you're going to run into some problems. <clears throat> you can set up, you know, this. So basically, you come in here, and um, you could create a roughness map if you want, but remember, that's more textures, more memory. I don't even know who's using metallic in their landscapes, but if you do, maybe you need a metallic map. But instead, what usually works pretty good is just averaging it. So in our um, landscape, we normally have a specular of zero or close to zero. So we'll say zero is the average. And for our roughness, we're usually like 7, 0.7 to 1. I find that 0.9 works pretty good. And we are creating a normal map that is important. Um, potentially, you might need to use this opacity mask map. Um, if you had caves in the distance, you could see then you'd probably have to do that to make them disappear. So potentially that one, I mean, occlusion mapping, maybe if you're doing something special. But um, then the next thing down here, it sounds really cool, but it's not as cool as it sounds. Bake foliage to landscape, bake grass to landscape. I was like, sweet. It's going to take those static meshes and it's going to put them on it. No, all it does is color, tr attempts to color the, the landscape, the color of the foliage. Potentially, if you're really, really, really far away, maybe having a green pixel counts as a tree, but that's not high enough quality for what I want to do. Um, so, no. No check to those. So, we'll come down here, do the same thing. Our roughness constant is 0.9, and our specular is 0.0. And we could bake this out by hitting these generate buttons, but it's still not going to work. This one took me about a week to figure out. I was going through all of the C++ code line by line uh, in the baking, and I finally realized that the baking doesn't have a camera. <laughs> it bakes without a camera. And so what happens if we bake this right now, the textures won't look anything like what the textures actually look like in our world, and there's a reason. So to fix that, we have to come over to our landscape material, and remember I said there's no camera. That means that anything that has a camera isn't going to work. In fact, uh, they just return zeros. And so we have a camera uh, here. OK, this one's a problem. It's just going to return zero uh, and cause issues for us. So what we want to do instead is we want to disconnect that. Hold, I'm holding down to one and clicking, which gives me a constant. And I'm interested, this is the near and this is the far. The far shows top when alpha is one. And obviously we're doing far distance, so we're interested in that one. 
So I'm going to set this value to 1 and connect it to alpha, which means we'll always get the top. Okay, so that takes care of this one. And I believe the second camera related function is in our grass. So this one right here, <coughs> um, pixel depth. That is problematic, and that goes into this alpha for the base color. And uh, so what we got to do is, uh, let's see here. Taking a look uh, just to make sure I tell you correctly. I've already done this in my uh, in my test project. It's always always a little bit of fun to get this working right. So I'll go over to the test project here and see what I did. Yeah. So I basically used a really large value. Um, is how I handled it in the test project. So it seemed to work pretty good. So we'll come over here for this pixel depth, and we'll basically just say, yeah, it's really far away. So again, I'm going to hold down the one key, the one, the number over the queue, and it'll give me that. And I'm going to paste in this large value, connect it into here as the pixel depth, because the pixel depth would have returned zero. Um, and those are the only, I believe, the only camera related. Let it recompile the shaders here. And we'll just take a quick double check on the cliffs, but I don't think, and we're just temporarily changing those. Yeah, I don't think the cliffs were affected by it. Oh, they were, but it was the camera depth in the landscape, not in the cliff layer. So now what we've done is we've basically, and you can see it looks different, but we basically uh, removed the camera from it, which is allowing our bake is now going to turn out correctly. So let's bring this back up. We can hit generate. And I don't think I wanted to do that yet. Let me see where it put it. Apparently, I'd already done that one. OK. So yeah, OK, we're good. I guess I had this other one sitting out here from before. Yeah, that's actually going to throw in. OK, cool. So what it does is it creates, yeah, this is new, because only one of them's there. It creates this subfolder under our world here. So we created that world comp in our world, and we creates these subfolders. And this is what it baked down. So there it is, 14,641 vertices. There's our baked material. Um, there is our level, it's a sublevel. And here is our um, texture, which it baked, and our normal, which it baked, right? Open one of those up, and that's what it baked for us. And uh, so we can come back. I guess I closed it. Come back to some of our level, de level details, and we'll generate LOD2. And there it is. There's the second one, 625. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Instead of 1 million, uh, it's actually more than a million, because you can see there it's 101,600. So it's more than a million uh, down to 625. And uh, that's the one we're actually sitting in right now. So that's actually not going to make it show up uh, further away from us. Uh, but what we can do is we can basically take these same settings and we can go through and we can do the rest of these. So I'm going to pause the video while I go through and basically do the same thing we did here to the other eight of these. Go through one by one, and uh, you can do the same. I'll be back. OK, so I've gone through all of the rest of the tiles, and I have replicated the same settings to all of them. Something to watch out for, because as I was going through and doing it quickly, I made a mistake on the first one uh, that I did, is this static mesh material settings, they look very similar to the landscape material settings, but make sure that you use the landscape material settings and not the static mesh material settings or it isn't going to work. So uh, 
don't make that mistake that I did, um, and uh, and make sure you use the landscape material settings. Okay, so now those have all been generated, and you can double check by clicking on each one of these and making sure that there's two sets there. Sometimes as I get going through, I accidentally miss some. I'm sure going through nine of those felt painful. Um, we did 400, so that's really painful. <laughs> it took, it took, uh, it took the guy that was doing it like two days of mindlessly doing that for 400 of them. Uh, we had some other stuff we had to do too. That wasn't the only thing. Um, we actually don't use the, uh, the best generation out of, uh, out of, um, UE4 here, and I'll show you. I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so now we have now we have generated static meshes, two levels of them, and now when we drop into the level here, we should see something different. Oh, look at that! You remember last time we weren't seeing the full the full distance over there. It was stopping before it got to the uh, health bar. You see, we probably should do some kind of sizing on that health bar since it shouldn't be that big from that far away, but it's, it's using screen space rather than world space, so that's why. Um, so we now are seeing further away, and it's because it's loading in those static meshes. And I'm going to show you how you can, how you can see this easily, is that um, you can press the F8 key, and you can basically leave your body and see what the world looks like. It'll still use that location where you're at, as the way to decide what level of LODs to show. So as we come over here, you see, you can see that it's slightly different. I think probably this one needed to be, this is that first LOD, I think it needed to be 2048 texture. So we can go back and redo that. Um, you can go back and bake those as many times as you want. In fact, every time you do sculpting work on a tile, you have to go back and rebake it. So we could go back in there and bump that up to 2048. And I don't, I don't know might help a little bit. It's hard to say. It's also just a slightly different color, and we could play around with some of that. But here's the thing I really don't like. So they don't line up perfectly. And this is a, just it's just their, their algorithm for reduction is poor. And I'm going to show you what, what this looks like. So we're going to come back over here, and we're going to see what this looks like with wireframe on. OK. So this is a landscape, this is a landscape. That's LOD1, that's LOD1, and all of these other ones are LOD2. Now the mistake that uh, is in this reduction, and it's okay, it's just not ideal, is that you'll see it still keeps a perfect grid, grid pattern. And obviously if you were willing to um, move these around off of the grid pattern, you could more closely approximate what was originally there by using less vertices. The other thing that this does not do is you'll notice that the gaps, there's gaps, right? So we ac actually go and take each one of these and export them to an external program, and the program that we run will actually preserve the edges. So even though the inside, and it only costs a few more vertices to do that, but even though the inside is this low res, We'll have the outside will still be the large res that matches what it connects to, so that there's no so there's no seam. Um, but from this distance, can you see the seam anyway? Most of the time, not. And that was kind of an aggressive lowering anyway, so you could potentially um, you could potentially go less aggressive and have and have less of an issue. But uh, this is basically the secret to having uh, massive worlds. Uh, we're only doing. Um, a three-by-three three three kilometer area here, but we do the same thing on... Uh, we do the same thing on 20 kilometers, and we still get this same, you know, 120 plus. It's it's at 119, because that's, that's where the limit is. Uh, we can actually, if you want to see what it really is, you do t.maxfps. I don't know what it's going to be, but we'll say like 500. Ah, it's not equals. I always get that one wrong. T dot max FPS 500. Okay. So we're getting like 156, 157. Um, might be a little bit different. We, we can hit F8 to go back to our body. Yeah. So 
So, you know, we're seeing most of the world here. Some of it's occluded there, we're getting 160 some frames per second. This grass is obviously taking up a lot of it, um, frames per second wise, compared to what this landscape's taking up. Oh, maybe not. Doesn't actually look that much. You can tell kind of where you point. You can also do a stat unit. See the breakdown here? Yeah, so there's no draw call issues, so it's GPU bound. Yep, okay. That's the one that matches. So um, anyway, that is the uh, the secret to uh, super fast landscapes, and there is one other. It's one other thing we need to do. Uh, God, don't 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 forget this part. I often do, but don't forget this. We actually need to go back, and we want we want our camera stuff in our landscape. That was just temporarily for baking. Uh, what what you could do too potentially is have two landscapes. Um, but I find that it's actually easier to edit the landscape than swap out the material in every one of these proxies. I wish that changing the landscape here, there was a button that said set for all proxies. Maybe there's a way to do it, and I just haven't found it yet. Um, it's annoying when you have 400. Um, so I usually just edit this landscape. But we're going to go put this back. And I'll usually just drag these off to the side so they're ready for the next time I need to bake. And I can remember what I changed. So that one's going to take care of that. And the grass was the pixel. Pixel depth down here. Let's pull this off to the side here so we remember. Our pixel depth back. And we'll save this. And we'll save this. And I'd probably play around with those colors. I can see the line where it's drawing it there, and that doesn't make me very happy. So I'd probably play around with that a little bit. Try to uh, try to tweak. Maybe the roughness was a little bit off at 0 0.9. Maybe it was closer to 0 0.7. Uh, anyway, there's a few things you can do there to tweak it, get it, uh, get it seamless. So um, there we go. And uh, that's all for. For this video, uh, I think in the next video, I think we're going to be taking a look at zone portals. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this into a zone, and we're going to put a portal across that skinny area there, and we're going to create the other one into a zone. And then maybe we'll drop a city, some walls or something, over there or over here, and the gates to the city there will make those go into a separate zone as well. Okay, see ya.